Armando Hasudungan, Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos, visit Facebook Armando Hasudungan without a space, like, ask questions, answer questions, and please post some of your interesting artworks if you have any. And you can change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics, please. Now this video will look into the functions and disorders related to the cranial nerves. Now let's just look back at the names and the locations of each of these nerves. So nerve 1 is the olfactory nerve. Nerve 2 is the optic nerve. Nerve 3, the ocular motor nerve. Nerve 4, the trochlear nerve. Nerve 5, the trigeminal nerve. And nerve 6, the abducens nerve. Nerve 7 is the facial nerve. Nerve 8 is the vestibular cochlear nerve, which is also known as the acoustic nerve. Uh, nerve 9 is the glossopharyngeal nerve. Nerve 10, situated here, the vagus nerve. Nerve 11, the accessory nerve. And nerve 12, the hypoglossal nerve. So as we've seen, there are 12 cranial nerves, all with different, yet some with uh, similar functions and promote similar functions. We will look at the brief function of each of these nerves, the disorders and disruptions and the signs and symptoms that may occur in each of these nerves if they are damaged, as well as the potential causes. Now I am going to miss bits and pieces and not add some information and things, so sorry in advance. If you want to add things about the nerves, please write it in the comments below. So let's just begin. Um, nerve 1 is the olfactory nerve for olfication, which means for smell. So the nose. Now it is a sensory nerve. I denote S to mean sensory. And other nerves have M, which is motor, and PS, which is par a parasympathetic nerve so with parasympathetic functions. So the olfactory nerve is to do with the nose. Damage to the olfactory nerve can cause um, a symptom known as anosmia. Now, anosmia is the loss of sense of smell, essentially. And damage to the uh, olfactory nerve can also cause hyposmia, which is decreased sense of smell, and also cacosmia, which is awareness of a defensive odor. Now, cacosmia basically means that um, the person always smells something bad, which would be terrible. Now, causes to damage to this nerve can be from trauma and meningitis, potential causes. Now nerve 2 is the optic nerve, which is for vision, and so it's a sensory nerve. So we receive information on what we see from uh, the eyes through this nerve. Now damage, and I'm just drawing eye here for, yeah. Now damage to this nerve can cause a variety of eye problems, optic atrophy, visual field disorders, blurry vision, and a term called scotomata, which is diminished vision within the visual field. Causes um, can be from ischemia, edema, hemorrhage, and other forms of traumas. Now nerve 3 is the ocular motor nerve which controls the ciliary muscles which are mu smooth muscles in the eyes uh, which are uh, muscles in the eyes middle layer. So it is a responsible for changing the shape of the eyes, particularly the lens to achieve accommodation for viewing objects. It is a motor nerve for M and also a parasympathetic nerve, PS. Now, damage to this nerve can cause double vision known as dilop diplopia, but particularly ocular motor nerve palsy, which is a broad term involving the eyes. Eyes usually look like this when it's damaged. There is deviation down and out of the eyes. Causes of co uh, can be from trauma, for example. Now, nerve 4 is a trochlear nerve, which controls extrinsic eye muscles. So it is M uh, for a, a motor nerve. Now, damage to this nerve can cause uh, problems with the eyes, and also similar condition with damage to nerve 3, uh, known as vertical diplopia, basically double vision, and also uh, nerve palsy, which is a broad term which implies weakness or immobility of the normal function of the, that particular nerve. Now, causes uh, to damage the trochlear nerve can be from Graves' disease, for example. Nerve 5 is a trigeminal nerve, which is important for the mastication muscles, so chewing muscles, your jaws. 
So it's a motor nerve, but it is also a sensory nerve for skin sensation in the face. So damage to the trigeminal nerve can cause the person to experience um, pain, essentially, all over the face, but particularly in the forehead region. Um, and there is also difficulty in clenching the jaw because the, tri uh, the trigeminal nerve is responsible for the mastication muscles. Now, damage to this nerve, the potential causes uh, for the sensory part of the nerve can be from neuralgia, which is a cell, a herpes virus, or even carcinoma. Now, this can also be said to damage the motor aspect of this nerve. The causes and symptoms can also be uh, due to compression of the nerves by surrounding blood vessels. And this can also be said for damage to other cranial nerves as well. Nerve, uh, next is nerve 6, which is the abducens nerve, controls extrinsic eye movement, not muscle, but it is very much associated with nerve 4. The abducens nerve is a motor nerve. Now the common associated feature of this nerve is that the person's eye typically one faces medially and cannot be moved laterally, so it cannot be abducted. That is why this nerve is called an abducens nerve, because under normal conditions, if it's not damaged, it can abduct the eye. So abduction, abduction, abducen, nerve. Damage uh, can be caused by nerve palsy, a broad term. Causes can uh, be also from cerebrovascular accidents, and even through a combined injury from other cranial nerves, such as cranial nerve 4. And this can be due to trauma. Uh, next is nerve 7, is a facial nerve, so obviously has to do with the muscle. It is an important nerve for taste, saliva and tear secretion, and also facial expression. It is a sensory nerve, a motor nerve, and with associated parasympathetic controls. Now damage to this nerve causes difficulty with facial expression on one side of the face, depending on which of the two of the facial nerves were damaged. This is referred to as central facial weakness, commonly known as Bell's palsy, where half of the person's face cannot be expressed. Damage to this nerve uh, can also impair the sense of taste. Causes can uh, include varicular vosta virus and trauma. Severe damage to this nerve can cause face paralysis, um, a severe condition of Bell's palsy, of half the face. Our next nerve is nerve 8, which is the vestibular cochlear nerve, also known as the acoustic nerve. Now, it's important in hearing and vestibular function, so balancing in the ear and also the body. So it's a sensory and it's also a motor nerve. Now, damage to this nerve damages our sense of hearing, so the ear, but also because the vestibular uh, function is also within this nerve. It also balance. Uh, it also damages our balance, so we cannot balance properly even when we walk. For example, now damage to this nerve can cause, for example, impairment of hearing, uh, loss of air conduction in the ear, vertigo, which is dizziness in the ear, and tinnitus, which is spinning head sensation when ear is blocked. Causes can include perilymph fistula, which is an abnormal uh, connection between the fluid in the inner ear and the air-filled middle ear. It can be also caused from cochlear concussions, auditory ossicles disruptions, the three middle ear bones, and also damage to the vestibular cochlear nerve itself can be caused by the disruption in the eardrum. Nerve 9 is the glossopharyngeal nerve, which has many functions including taste, tongue sensation, saliva secretion, and also oxygen and carbon dioxide monitoring in the blood. So it's a motor and sensory nerve, and also a parasympathetic nerve as well. Now damage to this nerve is usually a com combination of damage uh, to nerve 10 as well as nerve 11. But of course this particular nerve, uh, nerve, the glossopharyngeal nerve itself, can be damaged. So here is a section of the mouth. Now damage to the glossopharyngeal nerve explicitly can cause, hang on a sec, can cause pain in the tongue can cause throat pain, tonsil pain, and even ear pain. And the causes for this can be from the compression of a nerve by the blood by surrounding blood vessel in the brain, for example. Nerve 10, possibly an uh, important nerve to remember, I would say, is the vagus nerve, which controls taste, fre uh, fre uh, 
pharynx activity, epiglottis sensation, also has a role in the innervation of the, uh, of the, of the gastrointestinal tract, um, the glands and the muscles, and also controls the trachea and has a role in control of cardiac muscles as well. So it's pretty important. Now damage to this area is broad and encompasses several types of problems. I will probably not uh, say much here, but you can look in the books, literatures for more information. But it can cause dysphagia, which is difficulty swallowing or paralysis in swallowing, vocal cord weakness, so difficulty in speaking. It can damage the nuclear am amigus, which is the nuclei uh, that, that, that receives this nerve, um, and also for a few cra other cranial nerves. And it can cause aphonia, the inability to speak, and hoarseness, which means raspy, harsh voice. Now, damage to this nerve can also cause pain. Nerve 11 is the accessory nerve, which is important in controlling pharynx, larynx, soft palate muscles activity, the cranial portion, and it controls the sternonucleotide mastoid muscles, I hope I pronounced that right, and the trapezius muscles as well, the spinal portion, that is. The accessory nerve is a motor nerve. Now, same as nerve 9, damage to the accessory nerve usually involves nerve 9 and 10. But explicit damage to the accessory nerve itself can cause paralysis of the sterno, uh, sternocloid mastoid muscle um, in the neck. Um, and it's portrayed by the flatness to the neck as well as inability to rotate the neck itself. Damage to the accessory nerve can also paralyze the trapezius muscles, uh, which causes a drooping off of the muscle symptom, as well as, as the in, an inability to raise the shoulders. Paralysis of these muscles can be caused by a gunshot or a stab wound to the neck. So again, the sternonucleotoid mass, mastoid muscle and the trapezius muscle can be paralyzed if this nerve is damaged from gunshot or stab wounds to the neck. Now the last nerve is nerve 12, and it's the, called the hypoglossal nerve. Hypo, as in below. So hypoglossal, as in the nerve below the glossopharyngeal nerve, if that helps you remember. Now the hypoglossal nerve is a motor nerve controlling the muscles of the tongue. Damage to this nerve can cause lingual paralysis, which is tongue paralysis, dysarthria, which is speech disorder, and also swallowing difficulties because the tongue is paralyzed, obviously. Now, these can, these can be caused, these problems can be caused by a tumor, a stroke, or even an infection. Now, a notable feature is muscles, uh, muscle tongue atrophy due to damage to this nerve, which may seem like, which, which can be seen um, that half of the tongue cannot be controlled, and so the tongue uh, deviates or bends towards the, the damaged side of the nerve if you get what I mean. So that was it for the cranial nerves function and the associated disorders with it. I hope you enjoyed it. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And you can write comments down below if you want to add things to it. Um, thank you.